then never come back, sign the divorce papers, and leave. My husband hurled these harsh words at me when I said I wanted to return to my parents' home. I gladly signed the divorce papers, and the divorce was finalized on the same day. That's how desperate I was to get away from my husband. After submitting the divorce papers, I reunited with my father at my parents' house. I told him about what led to my divorce. Without showing any anger, my father calmly listened to my story. Then he made a phone call and stood up saying, Let's go. I followed, standing up and getting into the car, together with my father, to retaliate against my ex-husband. My name is Elizabeth Turner. I'm a 51-year-old stay-at-home mom. I met my husband, George, in college and got married to him. He has been very successful and is working at a trading company and he's about to become a senior executive. My marriage with him was never smooth sailing. Well, maybe for him it was, but for me, it was like living in hell because of the pain I had to endure every day. My husband was two-faced. He put on a great character around people. Everyone around us praised him as the ideal husband, and he was lauded every day. So much that probably nobody would have believed his true nature. That's to be expected. No one would think that a man with such a respectable title would be abusive. Even before getting married, I didn't notice it. How can I expect an outsider to see through it? My husband was actually a self-centered person, and his true nature started to show only after we got married. When we were dating, he was very gentle and patiently taught me things, even when I was incompetent. He was such a considerate person, but after we got married, he completely changed. Knowing I couldn't easily leave since we got married, he started treating me as if I were his possession. Hey, what's with that bland food? I, I'm sorry, I did try it before serving it to you, but no excuses. Every day was like this. I'd express a small opinion and my husband would scream and intimidate me with loud noises. After a while, I became afraid to even voice my opinion to him. As long as I didn't resist, I'd be okay. And that's what I kept telling myself. And now I'm completely under his thumb. I used to have friends and even tried to reach out for their advice once. But he somehow picked up on that and cut off my communication with them. He intervened and managed to effectively cut off my SOS by reaching out to my friends himself. There's no one else who'd take care of a screw up like you. You just need to listen to me. I ended up forced into a life in this prison called home. Any action I tried to take was immediately stopped. I couldn't even seek help from my neighbors, let alone my friends. Every time I tried to act, I was met with, Do you think this is okay? Who do you think you owe your life to? If you think you can live without me, I'd love to hear how. But I had no comeback to that. Just as my husband said, I had no one to rely on. My mother was no longer alive, and while my father was, he wasn't the kind of person I could easily rely on. To be precise, I didn't even know where my father was. When I was young, he left me and my mother. I had no financial means to live on my own and no one to rely on. At some point, I started to believe that I might not ever be able to get out of here. I came to believe it, but then, there came a breaking point. My husband took out his frustration on me after losing gambling. The sheer absurdity of it pushed me to my limit, and I decided to convey my desire to return to my mother's home, which she left for me. Please, it's only for a little while. I want to go back home. I want to pay respects at my mom's grave. The truth was, I wanted to get away from my husband for a bit. But there was no way I could say that honestly. Not that I didn't want to pay my respects to my mother. But more than anything, I wanted to get out of this house. That was my sole intention. 
No way. Why would you show your face to someone who's already gone? They aren't even there. Stop this occult-like thinking. There's no need to go back. Without even looking at me, my husband continued to read the financial newspaper. I was at a loss for words at his demeanor. It was as if he didn't even consider me human anymore. I began to doubt if it was even possible to continue living with this man. Then, it was as if something inside of me snapped. Understood. When I responded coldly to my husband's words, it seemed to rub him the wrong way. He furrowed his eyebrows and shifted his gaze from the newspaper to me. What's up with that tone? You really think you can talk to me like that? I don't care. I no longer consider you as human. What did you say? Even if something happens to me because of this man, it doesn't matter anymore. If I could go to my mother, that would be enough. Maybe. I had prepared myself to end everything inside me. That's why I was able to stand my ground against my husband, staring him down without backing off. I... Inside, I was terrified. It was my first act of defiance in a long time. It was inevitable that I would be afraid of someone whose actions were unpredictable. But I won't lose. I absolutely won't let myself be controlled by my husband anymore. I will be going back to my hometown. I didn't avert my eyes from my husband's glare, but looked straight into his eyes. I tried to act bravely so he wouldn't notice how scared I was. My husband was furious. He slammed down the financial newspaper on the table, went to the shelf with his work materials, and pulled out a piece of paper. Then don't ever come back. Sign the divorce papers and leave. In his anger, he shouted profanities and thrust the divorce papers at me. Probably he thought I'd panic. There was no way I would react like that. On the contrary, I was ecstatic. Inside, I was so overjoyed, I felt like dancing for joy. However, I couldn't let him know that. It was a scene I'd been waiting for all these years. Now, I could finally be free. Maintaining my poker face, I simply replied, Understood. Then, upon receiving the divorce papers, I promptly signed them and demanded his signature as well. Seeing this, he seemed taken aback, apparently shaken by the unexpected turn of events. I suppose he thought I'd cling to him and beg for his mercy once he presented the divorce papers. But that wasn't going to happen. I've waited for this moment for a long time. There's no way I'd regret this decision now. And so our married life came to an end, and our divorce was finalized within that day. I returned to my maiden name, Elizabeth Brookfield. Immediately after our divorce was confirmed, I hopped on a plane back to my hometown. My childhood home, which had become rather dilapidated since my mother's death, was dusty and in a state unsuitable for living. Getting this place cleaned up today seems like a tall order. <sighs> As I sighed heavily in front of the house, I heard the thud of something heavy falling from behind. Are you alive? Turning around at the unexpected exclamation, I saw an elderly gentleman in a gray suit standing there. The man seemed familiar, and I began to sift through my memory. Before I could pin it down, the elderly man hugged me tightly, weeping, and saying how much he'd wanted to see me. I'm so glad. When I heard the news of your death, I couldn't sit still. I finally found you. I've been wanting to see you. I'm truly sorry that I wasn't there for you then. The old man kept crying and apologizing, mistakenly thinking I was someone else. The strength in his arms as he held me was intense, as if he were trying to confirm my existence. And the warmth of his embrace brought back memories of my childhood. Could it be? Dad? He must have been taken aback by my words. The old man jerked in response, slowly moving away from me. Then, letting tears streak down his face, he stared intently at me. 
could it be? Are you Elizabeth? The old man murmured while scrutinizing my face and body as if confirming. I couldn't remember his voice or face, but the feeling and scent of his embrace. Instinctively, I realized that he was my biological father, Matthew. I knew it, Dad. I've always wanted to meet you. The moment I realized he was my real father, I hugged my long-lost father again. I had no idea where he was. All I remembered was his name. My mother had staunchly refused to tell me his last name, making it impossible to find any clue about my father. Elizabeth, I'm glad you're doing well. Realizing I wasn't his wife, my father was momentarily taken aback, but then he quickly accepted me and hugged me back. I'm hanging in there. I'm relieved to see you're well, too, Dad. I'm sorry. I left you and your mother, and I... During the war, my father had eloped with my mother and raised me. Despite having managed to escape to a place in rural America where nobody knew us, as the heir to a wealthy family, my grandparents couldn't just let my father go. It seemed that before I was old enough to understand, they took him back home. Mom always cared about you, you know. Huh? When I was a child, I asked my mother once, Mom, don't you resent Dad? Why would I? Because he left you behind, didn't he? It's sad that he just left you behind and went somewhere else. As I puffed out my cheeks and spoke, my mother stroked my head gently and smiled. Elizabeth, I'm not alone. Huh? Your father left you behind, didn't he? It's not his fault. If there's anything to resent, it might be this generation. Looking out at the garden from the porch, my mother smiled a somewhat sad smile. If it weren't for these times, we might have still been together. That's what I think. So, Elizabeth, if I have the chance to meet your father again in the next life, I want to be with him as a proper married couple this time. Her smile, as she said this, was somewhat shy. I was deeply moved, even as a child, realizing that my mother truly loved my father from the bottom of her heart and that she still thinks of him unchanged. When I told my father, he broke down right there, crying and rubbing his face on the ground. I... I, too, want to see you again. Dad. Until my father had his fill of crying, all I did was rub his back. Dad, who cried until his tears and voice dried up, finally raised his head and smiled with swollen eyes. I'm sorry, showing such a pathetic side of me when we were reunited after so long. No, don't worry about it. If you're here... And Mom hasn't shown herself. She must have passed away before us. My father, who had regained his composure, speculated about my mother from the situation and muttered as if he had realized something. I nodded slightly at his words and led my father to the family altar, and we decided to pay our respects to my mother after a long time. It's been a long time, but we've finally come to see you. I'm back. As I clasped my hands together in front of the altar and whispered in my heart, I felt like my mother was smiling and welcoming me back. I had that kind of feeling. As I shared my recent life updates to my father, he noticed the ring on my left ring finger. By the way, did you get married? The ring, a symbol of my love with my ex-husband that I had completely forgotten about, felt like handcuffs to me now. I felt a sense of disgust for the ring, and as I removed it in front of my father, I answered his question. I was, but I just got divorced. Divorce? Did something happen? I was really torn whether to be honest with my father, who looked worried. There's no guarantee that he would believe me. He might even take my ex-husband's side and tell me to stop the divorce and try again. As my anxiety spiraled in me, my father seemed to sense it. 
He placed his hand on my head and gently stroked me as if to dispel my unease. I want to protect you, to make up for not being able to do anything for your mom. I might be a helpless father, but will you talk to me? I'm on your side. The warmth and kind words of my father naturally brought tears to my cheeks. I don't ever remember receiving such kind words during my marriage life. It's okay to rely on someone. Feeling as though my mother was also urging me on, I decided to tell my father everything about the mistreatment I had received from my ex-husband. After I finished my story, my father stayed silent for a while, not attempting to respond. Should I have kept it to myself after all? I regretted my decision and was filled with anxiety. As he watched me, my father abruptly stood up seemingly deep in thought. Elizabeth, follow me. Huh? Where are we going? Just come. But, without further explanation, my father instructed me to follow him, and we both got into a waiting car. I had no idea where we were headed, but while I was pondering this, my father was on the phone with someone. Hey there, it's been a while. I've got something to discuss about your son. We're on our way back home now. Could you come over? I appreciate it. It appeared he had invited someone over to the house, but who could it be?